This is just a really short video, again, um, mainly for one or two guys at Borders Down who asked about this. Um, this is just the setup of the Sega Astro PC. This was a cheap Optiplex that I bought for 70 quid. So I've just turned the monitor on, I've literally just turned the PC on, and you'll see it boot in. Um, it's running about 3.2 or 3.3 gigahertz, maybe, the PC. Um, so I replaced everything, all the Windows branding, including the kind of boot up sequence here. Um, which you can see, and I've set it just to boot straight in uh, and do this, as you'll see in a sec. Now, unfortunately, you'll get this um, screen because of the nature of having to set it up uh, with a batch file and how a trap mode launches. Uh, and sometimes that will disappear, and sometimes um, it won't. Sometimes it will disappear, sorry, so sometimes it will appear, that screen, and other times um, it won't. It sort of depends how much it's it, it's been played. Anyway, I'm just flicking through these very quickly, and you can obviously see a whole range of different stuff. Um, so this is what's kind of planned to be put on, on the Astro. I have tried to limit the games, because obviously if there's hundreds, then uh, they don't get played. So starting off with the most sensible, you know, the most sort of what you'd expect. Um, the sort of main list you've got here. Now I've set this up using a Novato theme. I've added uh, just individual videos for things I wanted and then got the artwork. In some cases I've actually made the artwork as, as well. So there's a whole list of stuff here. The advantage obviously of using a PC uh, as opposed to a Pi to Jammer or any of those kinds of things is it does run the higher um, end stuff as you can see. So if we start right at the top up here somewhere, you know, these are all games I, I will play or I will play with friends. Or uh, games I just really enjoyed when I was a kid. So, you know, Airbusters was a classic at my my sports centre, for example. Uh, and then Batrider is one I came to later. But all of these I, I generally will play reasonably regularly. Uh, anything I don't, I've tended not to not to actually put on here uh, at all. Um, so it's a great game there. Uh, Demon Front. Uh, the Donkey Kongs will all run in a, in, in vertical in, in like a in a, on a horizontal orientation. Uh, again, some of the latest shooters, ESP Rade, they will run ESP Galera, that will run. Uh, and one that sort of people always seem to go on about is obviously uh, Killer Instinct. So you can see that will run obviously as well. Just boot straight in here, uh, and we've got this running all at native res. This is as you can see there. This is running using Groovy Mame. Uh, what's the latest version, 2.06 or 7 or something, but as you can see it runs fine. I'm using a keyboard at the moment, so I'm not going to play it that well. Again, if the um, if anything looks a bit messy or the angle's a bit wrong, apologies about that. This is just really to show you kind of what it can do, but you can obviously see here it's, you know, it's, it's running and everything. And again, I can't, I can't really play with the keyboard. So if we exit out of there, and again we're back to a trap mode. Um, some people said, why would you want, um, you know, consoles on here? Well, the reason being is that actually the version of, so this is the Saturn console. The reason of Street Fighter Zero Three 3 here is far superior to the original CPS2 board and actually made way for um, the Naomi release much later on. So this is uh, actually a Saturn emulator and this runs at native res. This runs perfectly, as you will see. Um, and this uses RetroArch, as you can see here. So... Some people have asked about this because it's not there's not a lot of documentation actually on this when you come to come to look at it. Um, hold up, but if you go to if we back out there, uh, as you can see here, if you go to settings and video, um, the super uh, CRT super resolution is set to two five six zero, and our CRT switch res is actually turned on there, just like you would have in um, in Groovy Main. Oh, in Groovy Main. Oops, in Groovy Main. Sorry, I didn't mean to exit out of there. Um, so just another quick look at that. If we go down to our quick menu, if we go down to settings, it's fairly simple to set up this. Go to video, we've got our CRT switch res turned on and it's running at a super wide resolution of 2560, um, allowing to use the original, um, the native Saturn res on here as well. So it looks great. Uh, it looks just like a normal Saturn does. I've actually had a Saturn on here and compared these side by side, which I should have made a video on, but I didn't. And uh, there's no difference really there. Uh, whatsoever. I'm using a slightly older version down here of RetroArch because uh, I find the new one struggles a little bit with um, it does some funny things with Saturn emulation because of um, extra extra options that are put in there. It could be just me, but I was happy with this. It is, it, um, and you'll see this runs this runs fine. If the screen looks out at all, this is because it's actually set up to the um, the MS9 monitor on the Astro rather than on uh, on this monitor here on this PVM. So again, this is 03 running, and this is running in native res, of course. 
uh, and as you can see it runs completely fine uh, on here and this again this was something that will sit in the Astro obviously it's a bit weird to have now loading on an arcade but I think increasingly you know with the, the later arcade stuff did have uh, loading times on certain things so you know and that just runs as you would expect of course uh, you've got all the dramatic battle modes which the arcade obviously doesn't have or the CPS2 version doesn't have rather and then you know runs just uh, as you would uh, expect so we'll exit out of that um, Shinobi Legions I got that that's quite arcadey uh, Saturn Bomberman I quite like and I've actually played that. I uh, played Bomberman obviously originally in, in the arcade version. Radiant Silver Gun, this version runs better than MAME uh, and it's got a few extra features so I use that. And again, Die Hard Arcade on the Saturn, the uh, the port here actually runs better than the arcade ROM set on, um, on MAME. Again, I've tried to avoid things that aren't arcade. All the Dreamcast stuff uh, runs fine so I've got Border Down, Callan Spike, Capcom vs SNK2, Dynamite Cop, etc, uh, etc, et Marvel vs Capcom 2, Power Stone, you know, Soul Calibur, both Virtua Tennis games there um, as well, Zero Gunner, so some of the shooters uh, too, this just, just runs again, so Gunbird 2, the main ROM on here runs a bit peculiarly, uh, peculiarly. so um, I, I run the Dreamcast version, and we know it's essentially just a Naomi. Anyway, uh, this runs uh, 640 by 480 res, just like the original Dreamcast. You can take it down to 240, but it, it looks a bit grubby in reality. And again, that's that's not a uh, fault of the emulator. That's the original hardware that it is emulating here too. Again, this is with a keyboard, so you know it, it's it's not going to be great. Um, so, oh, got a go running. And again, this is running via Raycast, um, via RetroArch, and as you'll probably see, if I don't die too much, um, there's a little uh, sort of pause there, um, but other than that, everything runs perfectly. It does that for some reason, uh, but then everything, oh, well, I'm dead, runs perfectly, as you can probably see on there, which is pretty impressive. You know, it's a 70 pounds, PC, so kind of what do you expect? Um, the more 3D, you know, 3D games work, the, the, the sort of higher end stuff, so Soul Calibur is fine, all this, I mean, uh, Fighting Vipers 2, all this this runs perfectly, so I wouldn't have it on here. I've um, got Naomi on here as well. Um, we've got Dolphin Blue, Street Fighter Zero Three, 3, and Metal Slug 6, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, the arcade of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 needed like a card or, or sort of a you had to sort of trade between, in Japan, the arcade, uh, if I remember correctly, and the console version to get all the characters. I may have got that wrong, but I think I'm right. So, hence the arcade version isn't quite as useful, really, to us as the Dreamcast version, which is why that is on here. Um, so this is Dolphin Blue. Um, so apologies there, I think uh, the recording ran out of space. Um, so I thought I'd start it from back here. Again, if the, the camera's uh, off slightly, uh, apologies, it's not set up, you know, professionally or anything like that this is just it again um this is the system just running um dolphin blue i'm booting into that uh yep again if the sound the sound's not is perfect but it's, it's not great it's coming from the pc speaker um so it doesn't sound ideal at this stage uh you know and as you can see that runs again perfectly there's no issue uh with that at all apart from i'm playing on a keyboard so i'm not going to do particularly well um, right, get out of I don't know what the, the buttons are, controls are on. Oh, I fast forwarded it by mistake. So, um, yeah, that's the uh, Thomas Wave uh, and Naomi as well. And then uh, we've obviously got Mega Drive on here. And again, it's the arcadey titles I've, I've got on here, um, all the stuff that was released in the arcade. Uh, and this is all running through RetroArch. Uh, all the console stuff is running through RetroArch again, or RetroArch. As you can probably see there. Uh, Messen or Misen, that, and that all, all runs perfectly, of course, because it's just a NES. Uh, Model 2 stuff, so running via the M2 emulator. Two versions of Virtua Fighter, there, uh, Virtua Fighter 2 there. Uh, one, the 2.1, you've got Last Bronx, Fighting Vipers, and, and Dead or Alive. And again, just boots in exactly the same way. You just select the game, press start, uh, and boot straight into it. Some of these, the controls, I've not set up properly on the M2. So uh, it's really simple to do, uh, but hopefully this is one I, one I have. 
So, yep. Yeah, I uh, just picked you know, whoever. Uh, so, oh. Uh, here we go, and as you can probably see, hopefully you can see on there, it might be running a, a bit odd uh, via the camera, but in, 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 in real life, as it were, um, everything is running as it should. Um, I'm not, again, I'm playing on a keyboard, I'm not really sure what the controls are. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So that runs at 640 by 480, which I think is, oops, I think is slightly different um, to the arcade, but it, it looks fine to me. Um, and I've, I've, I've run this quite extensively. Uh, I just exited it out of there wrong, which won't be the case when it's finally set up. Um, and obviously, main can't run the Model 2 stuff um, very well at all at this present stage, so you need the M2 emulator. PS1, this is just stuff that runs better on PS1 on um, the arcade, so Race Storm, R-Type Delta, Harmful Park, of course, Gunner's Heaven, uh, Thunder Force 5 and Strider 2. Some more of the arcade-y uh, SNES titles. I wouldn't want, you know, Zelda or anything on here. That'd be weird. I mean, I might even get rid of um, Super Mario All Stars or Super Mario Collection, rather. Uh, definitely keep Punch Out, but that uh, Turtles in Time is slightly different to the arcade. It's got some extra levels as well and, and tends to be just the arcade -y stuff. And then we're back to MAME, really, here. And as you can see, it's quite a reasonably extensive list. But again, things I will play. And if I don't play them regularly, then I'll eventually just remove them. But I've not got complete ROM sets because. There wouldn't be, you know, much point. Um, but again, this just runs through uh, a tracked mode, obviously, as well. Now, I've set this so you can actually turn the computer off with one button. Um, so you can either exit out of here with Escape Escape, or you can literally press the power button on the PC, uh, and it will turn itself down. And again, the only noise you'll hear is I've left of the Windows um, kind of branding is that noise to turn it off. The rest of it, obviously, as you can see, I've uh, completely replaced um, all of that so I don't have to kind of deal with that when I'm booting up or shutting the system down and that's it So hopefully that was useful and you can see how things run through RetroArch on there as well uh, Any questions, please just obviously drop me uh, a message maybe about setup or anything like that. Cheers